Pubs are important. They should be part of any community study, any one place study, because they have been the centre of the community for centuries. And in this presentation, I'm going to suggest why that, that is the case. As I say, that the heart of the community, it's where you go to meet friends, it's where you go to uh, have a meal with your family, uh, it's where, uh, if you're visiting a place, you may stay. You know, and there is so much going on in the pub, uh, particularly uh, the larger ones. They offer, as a community centre, they are a centre for celebrations, uh, weddings in particular, but also traditionally friendly societies and Freemasons and other societies would have an annual dinner at uh, a local pub. And so they are, as I say, a centre for, for this sort of thing. Uh, if a society had regular meetings, the chances are they would be at, at a public house uh, where there'd often be a back room you could hire for a, a minimal amount um, and then on the assumption is that you would uh, buy your beer and whatever from the bar. Many of the larger places would have uh, dancing halls, dance halls or assembly rooms, again, which is where again there will be annual uh, dances and that sort of thing, uh, particularly in Georgian England when assembly rooms are quite an important social centre uh, for the more respectable classes, uh, then you many and many inns, uh, particularly in country areas, would provide an assembly room uh, for uh, dancing. And lastly, there are the more formal side of things because quite often the pub would have the largest non-religious space available for hire. Um, so it's where the coroner's courts would meet. It's where in the bigger coachings and particularly there may be businesses operating from rooms or inside the pub itself uh, as and so much else going on. Uh, doctor surgeries, that sort of thing. So they are important not just for the traditional ways of drink, as we might think, but also as a facility for the community, uh, even though uh, they are not necessarily um, you know, drink related. Uh, there's also, again, of course, they provide, many of them provide food and accommodation. Um, so again, it's an important resource for tourists and for visitors to the area. There are three main types of pubs at the basic level of the ale houses, sometimes called beer houses and cider houses, which could only sell uh, ale or cider. Um, and they're the ones, places that the workmen would go to for a pint or two of an evening to, to gossip uh, and play, play, play dominoes or darts or something like that. Um, pretty basic working man's places, but they are the pubs that largely survive today because so many were set up uh, in the mid 19th century when uh, licensing was effectively abolished. So anybody with a few uh, guineas to spare could set up a pub and so many people did. Above them are the inns and taverns which offer better facilities, may well offer accommodation, may well offer uh, meals of a sort. Uh, and above them are the coaching inns, which are the bigger places in a town uh, and still are certainly in the smaller towns even today uh, where you would go for uh, meals and uh, dances and uh, weddings and that sort of thing. They're the sort of hotels which, uh, which would offer these facilities as well. So called because they were where coaches would stop. Uh, to uh, change horses uh, so that the, the passengers get out and stretch their legs and have a coffee or a beer. Uh, think pink with papers. Pubs have always been under suspicion by your authorities. Uh, you want to stop drunkenness, you want to stop fights, fist fights after closing time, you want to stop all the other bad things that go together, go to with uh, pubs and with the consumption of alcohol. You want to encourage moderation um, and you want, certainly the late 18th century, early 19th century, to prevent radicalism. Uh, I, you don't want people coming to have a few pints and formulating uh, 
an uprising, although it has to say my experience as a long-time drinker and discussion of radical ideas, uh, all the great radical ideas you come up with after an evening's drinking disappear in the cold reality of daylight the next day with your hangover. Um, so how do you control it? You control it by licensing pubs introduced in 1572, um, still in effect today. If you run a disorderly house, uh, you lose your license, it's as simple as that, or um, other penalty, or you are given warnings to improve yourself, prove, prove facilities there. You can restrict licensing hours, which famously during the First World War, but Victorians were beginning to do that with uh, Sunday closing. Um, and lastly, you get uh, lots of petty rules and regulations to make going to pubs uh, less of a pleasant experience, uh, restrictions on gambling, the, the couple playing uh, dominoes in this uh, picture here um, would not be allowed to do it for, for cash, you'd have to do it just as a social thing um, and uh, used to see in pubs in Sussex signs saying no loud laughing. So again, lots of petty rules to, to make going to pub rather less attractive than, than it probably should be. The key records are twofold, the licensing, licensees records, which as I say start in the 1570s but in effect from the mid 18th century. Um, the most useful ones are the ones from the late Victorian and Edwardian period where A, they're printed, which makes them easier to read, but also they give you a lot more information about pubs and also neighbouring establishments because it's all part of a thing about closing pubs in an area which has got a lot of pubs. So again, if you're in a, in, in a working class area, there might be a pub in every corner, one halfway down the street. So the authorities of late 19th century, in a way of restricting uh, number of pubs and therefore drunkenness, uh, will be closing pubs. And there's one way of doing that. And also if you ran a disorderly house, then that would be recorded here as well. All available at local studies libraries, not local studies, sorry, but like local archives, the survivor, that all survive by any means, but where they do, they're quite useful. But very little is online. Anything I can think of at present is online. There's some, a, a selection from the Surrey History Centre on Ancestry. Um, some ideas for research, uh, you know, what about the pub in your street or your village? Uh, what can you research about that? Often there's relatively little, but you never quite know what you're going to find. Uh, again, who were the locals in your pub, uh, in the pub? Uh, again, again, quite hard to find, but you never know what you, you might come across uh, when you start looking for. It may be it's doing a oral history project with some of the older members of the, of the community to see what they remember about the pubs that were here, that were there and the beer that they served and other facilities they offered. And again, work out about uh, why and when pubs closed, opened and closed. As I said, many closed in the late Victorian at, um, Edwardian periods and many more have closed in the last 30 years um, as uh, society changes and uh, people's expectations of, of pubs changed um, and um, the, a lot of the smaller local pubs have closed for one reason or another. Um, so I will suggest this is a brilliant research thing to take up. There's, it's very interesting, there's a lot to do and see and uh, reasonably challenging but who knows what you might find as you carry on so uh, happy drinking